Now that we're collecting user data from our front end, we can now create a backend route that'll process this data and store it inside of a database. As mentioned previously, we're storing users' emails and passwords inside of a database so that these users can later prove that they own a particular account through login logout functionality. This proving is done by comparing user submitted data such as email and password fields to whatever email and password was originally stored inside of the database. This initial data storage is exactly what we're implementing right now. So to store user info inside of a database, we need to use a backend language like Node.js that can communicate with backend related apps such as MySQL. We're essentially creating a chain of different programming languages and apps so that they can work together and perform the required task at hand, which is storing user data. Now there's a bit more that we have to take into consideration when storing user data. In order for our app to be secure, we have to ensure that the data being sent through our registration form is actually the kind of data we expect it to be. We wouldn't want someone using our email field as a placeholder to send malicious code up to our server. We want to make sure that the only data being pushed to our server from our email field is an actual email. And this kind of data checking is what's known as validation. There are two types of validation to consider when building web apps, backend and frontend validation. Backend validation is done on server side, meaning we are validating user input with Node.js to ensure that no matter where data is coming from, the data is always going to be the exact data we expect it to be. Frontend validation is a type of validation that's activated within the browser using JavaScript. Frontend validation notifies your users when they've inserted a piece of incorrect data into an input field. And this is great for improving a user's experience, but it doesn't fully protect your server from malicious attacks. Since frontend validation uses client-side JavaScript, hackers can edit this JavaScript directly, removing the frontend validation, which in return would allow the hacker to submit whatever data they want to the server, and this includes malicious scripts. This is why it's so important to have backend validation. It protects you from hackers that can edit your frontend code to bypass any validation barriers that may have been in place. As a result, we'll start by processing user submitted data on our backend with Express and then validating it with Express Validator. Looking at our app, you'll notice that we have a directory called server with a file inside of it called index.js. This is something that Nuxt created for us since we told Nuxt to install with Express, a backend framework we can use to read user submitted data and interact with things like databases. The most important thing to know when looking at this file is that we are instantiating Express on line 4, then telling it to listen for requests on localhost 3000, the hostname and port number that Nuxt provides by default. When we start Nuxt with npm run dev, we're actually starting an instance of Express that's intertwined with Nuxt. We're essentially saying let's use Express as our backend framework and then Nuxt as our frontend framework. We can tell Express how to process certain requests just like the one we sent with Axios in the last video. So what we can do is grab our Express instance which is sent to the const named app. Say we want to listen for any post request sent to API slash users and specify what should happen if a post request is received, which in this case we'll just log some text for now. So we're sending a post request from our front end using Axios to the route slash API slash users, which goes to our index.js file inside of our server directory, which in return logs our text since we told Express to do just that whenever a post request is sent to slash API slash users. To test this, let's fill out our form and hit submit. You may have expected to see data inside of the browser console, but it's important to note that whenever you're logging data in a backend file such as server slash index.js, it's always going to be displayed in the terminal window you're running your app in instead. So if we look inside our terminal window, you'll see that text is being logged each time we hit submit. Pat yourself on the back because we just successfully connected the front end of our app to the back end. Before we move on to back end validation, let's make sure that we can read the data being submitted from our input fields within the post handler we just created. Express conventionally stores user submitted data inside of a property called body, something that's located inside of a handler's request object. So instead of console logging our text, we're going to console log out rec.body. And when we submit our form, 
you'll notice that we are returned with a value of undefined. This is a common error faced by many developers. Express removed its native body parsing functionality a while back and now requires that you set up a separate body parsing package manually. All this means is we have to set up a separate package in order for user submitted data to be readable through rec.body. To install body parser, we'll run npm install dash dash save dash exact body dash parser at 1.19.0. Next, we'll import it into server slash index.js. Then before our route handler, we'll tell Express to use body parser to parse any data submitted in JSON or URL encoded format and place it inside of our rec.body property automatically. Data submitted by Axios is sent in JSON format by default, while data submitted using HTML forms rather than any JavaScript is by default URL encoded. The difference between the two can be seen within the Stack Overflow response. As a result, it's important that we encode both in case we want to use one form submission method over the other. Now when we submit our form, We'll see our data nicely formatted inside of a simple JavaScript object, perfect for validating and then storing inside of the database. Now that we have backend data being processed, let's ensure that this data is what we expect it to be by integrating backend validation. To integrate backend validation, we'll want to install an express validation package called express-validator. Express validator provides a number of useful functions that check whether user submitted data meets a certain set of criteria. To install Express Validator, we'll run the following command. npm install dash dash save dash exact express dash validator at 6.1.1. We'll then head back into server slash index.js and import two functions, check and validation result. from express-validator. We'll be using the check function as a form of middleware, meaning we'll be checking our user's input before we store it inside of the database, but still after the user submits the input in the first place. Our check middleware runs right in the middle of these two actions. So right in between slash API slash users and our function over here, we'll add an array. And inside of this array, we'll call our check functions to ensure that our user submitted data is valid. So check is a function that takes two optional arguments, a field name and a message. We want to check that the email submitted from our input field is indeed a valid email. The field name argument references our input's ID. So if we look at our email input, you'll see it has an ID of email. That's what we'll put inside of our check function. Then we'll check if this email is an actual email by chaining on the method is email. Express Validator will automatically check if the submitted data is indeed an email and store the result inside of our request object. To access the result of this check, we'll want to use the second function we imported from Express Validator, validation result. Validation result takes one argument, our request object. This takes any potential errors from our validation check and stores them inside of an object with some handy functions for error checking, one of them being is empty. We'll use this is empty function to determine whether or not any validation errors were found, and if there were, then we're going to return a response with a status of 422, which just indicates that there were indeed some validation errors. And we'll also return a JSON object with the exact errors so we can display them on the front end if desired. We'll add a console log inside of the conditional so we can see exactly what our errors look like if they exist. Then we'll submit our form again with some invalid data. Looking at our console, we're receiving some errors which means our validation checking is indeed working. All we're saying here is to stop running back in code if there's a validation error, otherwise proceed and perform actions such as storing this user's data inside of a database. 
To make our validation as clean and secure as possible, we'll chain on a normalized email method onto dot is email. This will ensure that all uppercase characters are transformed into lowercase ones. Then we'll add validation for our password field to ensure that it's larger than six characters. So we're going to add an isLength method that takes an object as an argument with a property of min, which we're going to set to six. Now when we try submitting a password in less than six characters, we log out an error in our console and end the user's request altogether. You always want to validate user submitted data to your server, so it's likely you'll be using Express Validator's check function in more than a number of ways. For a complete listing of Express Validator's check criteria functions, check out validator.js, the library that Express Validator uses for all of its data validation methods. With this in place, we can now store our validated user data inside of a database using MySQL. We'll be doing just that in the next video, guys, so I'll see you there right now.